what I'd like to talk about today is what type of hunting land you have. So I made an example of four properties, A, B, C, and D, and each one has pluses and minuses. Then the other thing we need to discuss is the four stages of the rut, and you need to know how the deer are changing about every 10 days through the hunting season, so you can be where the deer are at at the right time. And this is another issue that a lot of people don't understand what the deer are doing, and I'm going to try to help correct some of that. So here, what period of the rut is your stand for? You need to understand your land and what the deer are doing, and here it is. We're going to talk about the pre-rut, first but I want to show you four examples of property here we have farm a B C and D now guys we're gonna start with farm D farm D is nothing more than a couple of fence rows and a pothole a little swell in the field farm C has a cornfield, has a little ditch running through it, a couple of doe units, and basically the woods is more park effect. You can see basically through it, and it has a couple little thick spots. This is where some does would bed. Now when the corn is standing, the red dot means bucks. So you could probably have a buck bedded there when there's a cornfield. The woods, in my opinion, would not hold any quality buck because it ain't enough cover. Farm B has a big alfalfa field and a pothole out in the middle, nice little swell. It has a couple of doe bedding areas the creek runs through this the woods is split up in an L shape and this woods is a lot more thicker it is not real thick but it has a lot more dense cover so a lot better than farm C now farm A really has everything heavy fence rows multiple crops it has a big swamp with islands in it it has a very thick woods very dense you can't see more than 40 50 yards and this thing will hold a lot of bucks and mature bucks. So when the cornfields are up, your good chances are your buck is bedding in the cornfield when the cornfield's standing. They love corn because it, it hides them good. Then when the cornfield gets harvested, the buck will probably move up on the oak ridge. This is a big oak ridge up here. And he'll get himself elevated so he can see. Of course, acorns are dropping. He's going to love all that. He's close to his food source. And then this one is when pressure comes, he's going to move back to his hardcore bedding area in the swamp back into the cattails and the little islands where no one can find him. Now, let's discuss the four stages of the rut so you understand which farm to hunt at what time. Now, during the pre-rut, we're talking when the buck sheds his velvet to roughly October 15th, approximately. Now, on farm A, this buck would probably be in the cornfield, and this would be his thing. He'd swing up, eat a little beans maybe, get his acorns, swing down to the alfalfa at night, and he's going to be in a very short pattern at this time of year. And so basically, farm A and farm B, you would have a good chance of harvesting this buck. But farm C and D, I would not waste one minute of my time setting in them stands because I know the buck is across the street. This is a dirt road. Now he ain't gonna cross it. No houses are on this setup. Okay now let me explain something. Guys like me and other successful whitetail hunters that I know across the country like a Miles Keller. We all look at deer hunting in many different ways but the one thing that all of us have in common is none of us set in 10% stands. We make sure that we're within the 90% of where that buck is moving. So guys, farm C and D is out of the question in the first part of the season. I would only hunt farm A or B, okay? Now, let's look at what's going on during the pre-rut. One of the biggest mistakes is a hunter is one step behind. He forgets that acorns are dropping, beans fields are drying up, and the deer don't want them. And then the other problem is you got all this foliage starting to drop. You got people harvesting crops. You got hunters entering the woods, squirrel hunters, small games. Deer hunters are putting up their stands, and this buck is going through a lot of changes. And this makes a lot of deer a little more tougher at this time to hunt. Now, predictable pattern. He is still in a moderate bedding area and it's close to his food source. Like we explained, very close. Now, a lot of times this goes into a whole bunch, another ball game of understanding deer, but normally this is not his core area. Now, on the example we're using today, it is his core area, but most of the time a buck beds in the summertime, will you see the big bachelor groups? That ain't where the buck's going to hang out that fall. Okay, it's another whole thing of understanding does and bucks, and we'll get into that maybe in another episode. Now, the pre-rut, again, bucks. Look at rubs and scrapes at this time. Approximately from September. 
September 16th through the 30th, only about 8% of the rubs are made at this time. Now, from October 1st through the 15th, only about 17% of the rubs are made. It's just a flat line. When the buck sheds his velvet, everything starts to climb. You want to make sure you have water on the property because at this time it's still very warm and deer need to drink. And the other thing is you want to make sure you're staying some close, close to the staging area where he's entering out of thick cover or out of that oak ridge or cornfield and he's staging up before he goes out into some other food sources. Signs at this time you're going to need to understand rubs, tracks, droppings, all these tell you a story about a big buck. What way he's traveling his age, etc. All can be told by signs. You must keep the buck from going on high alert. Remember when we we're talking about inner and exit, biggest common mistakes. And here's what happens when you pressure a buck too much. Most of the time, it's the hunter himself that's basically pressuring the deer. Guys, I'm a guy that just gets a little time to sit and explain a few things. But most of the time, the hunters think the neighbors are all the problem. Guys, if you're doing everything right, where should all the deer be on your property? Most of the time, a hunter's doing things he doesn't realize. And so, inner and exit is very important. But here's what happens. Once you put a buck on high alert, he has about a 90% chance of making it through the season, or you only have about a 10% chance of harvest him. You make him go nocturnal, so he's only moving the last 15, 20 minutes, he's got about a 95% chance of making it through the season. And then if you make him actually leave the property because there's so much scent and hunting pressure, he moves out, that buck has about a 99% chance of not being taken by you. So guys, you need to keep these deer calm on your property and don't let them know they're being hunted.